course, if you got big fat fingers, it's very hard to get that screw back in. <laughs> okay, let's see if it fits on the end of the screwdriver. Okay, the dowels have had a couple of days to dry, so they're well set, and now what we're going to do is cut them off with a utility knife, re-drill pilot holes for the screws, and remount the mount, at which point I should be able to just clip on the door and make the necessary adjustments. I don't know if you can see, but the profile of the hinge mount has twisted over the years, it's no longer square. So one of the things that we're going to do is try to true that up a little bit and see if we can't get this door to hang straight. But the first thing to do is cut off those dowels. So that's what we're gonna do right now and take it from there. Now that we've cut off the dowels, we can proceed to marking out the new holes to put that hinge up correctly. It's actually a hinge mount, and it's right here. So I'm just going to take a pencil and put those um, new holes in square to the uh, frame, but I'm going to sight it off of the existing holes just to make sure they're square because this thing has to integrate with a bunch of already hung doors and I don't want it to hang wrong. Everything is sagged over time, so square is ideal, but in these older homes, almost nothing is square, and what you need to do is blend it in with the non-square that's there. <laughs> Just the way it goes with this older stuff. If you're doing retrofit, new work, you know, so you can kind of uh, try to approach the ideal. But in this older homes, I mean, this home is 45 years old. I'm thinking this uh, cabinet work might be original. It looks like 80s style cabinet work and that would be about right. So this hinge has been slowly sagging along with everything else and the house has been moving for a long 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 time. So if you look at the uh, the other door that's adjacent to it you can see the gap uh, where the end of the door is is significantly wider than where it starts off. And that's just the function of the age of the house. And then the other door, because there's three here, this door starts off nice and big, uh, nice and tight, I mean, and then sags this way. So we have two doors sagging in the same direction, but the hinges are opposite each other. Just bizarre. So this door has to somehow fit between those two. And that's going to get awfully tough. If you look at the way this door sits on the frame, it's fairly fat on the bottom, and then it gets nice and tight up at the top. So that's going to make this thing a little bit of an adventure, just fitting it in. So I guess the easiest way maybe is just uh, follow what's there, but a little tighter, and that should get us somewhere. We'll see. So here's the plan. We're going to use this existing hinge mount on the bottom as a guide and the outline of the old hinge mount also as a guide to figure out where those holes should go for the new, new position. My guess is 
it sagged a little tiny bit over time, which is okay because the other two doors it integrates with also sagged over time. And I have to leave myself enough leeway to be able to mount this door so it's not banging up against the other two. So it's not as straightforward as just mounting a single door. It's got to integrate with at least one other door, which is the facing matching door. So I guess what I'm going to try and do here is um, get the matching door to square up as much as I can. I think I've already tried to do that and uh, that's led us to where we are with the other one. It's got a very strange profile. And then get this door to match up with that one. So here we are. Now the first thing I've noticed about this door is that the bottom is not clipped in. See that little hook right there? That hook is supposed to be clipped in like this one. You see how that's clipped into the frame? And this one's flopping loose. So uh, first thing to do is loosen up this screw here. and get that thing in there right. There, see how that worked? I'll show you again. Right, you get the bottom hook hooked in to the frame and then you push cantilevers in and there's a clip. Now that's properly mounted. So that could have an effect on the, and then the, this is a securing screw to just stop it from, to take it out there's a release right on the end. You push and it pops out. So it's very straightforward to get this thing mounted. But you gotta get it in there. See it's gotta be in that thing. It was not in there. It was like this, and that's no good. It's got to go in, and then you push, and that's clipped in. And then this, what this screw does is it helps with some fine tuning and also secures the hinge from uh, popping out. Of course, if you got big fat fingers, it's very hard to get that screw back in. <laughs> okay, let's see if it fits on the end of the screwdriver. Just quasi magnetic. Maybe that'll be better. Let's get in there. Oh, yeah. Thank God for magnetic screwdrivers. So, let's see if that changes the profile of this door. It should make a big difference. So we'll just loosely seat that. Okay. Close up the door. And now we got a reasonably straight door. Looking good. That's a reasonably straight door, which means I can probably hang the other door against it reasonably straight, which is wonderful. So let's tighten everything up on this door, which is our sight. We're sighting off of this door, so okay, that's nice and tight. Okay, that's nice and tight. And what this screw does is it helps to adjust the um, the slant of the door when it's hanging. I've got them both backed out to the max. To the absolute max. Which means I should have maximum gap when this door is closed. So there we go. There we go. Close. I might leave a little pencil mark here to see where we are. This is the original. There. We've got the original backed off completely side. So now we can mount the other door flat and then drift them in towards each other using that second screw here. This one. We'll push the door this way. This way. As you adjust it. That's the theory. Let's see how we're doing here. See how it pushes the hinge out? So screw it, you'll see the gap right there gets bigger. 
and that means that it's actually physically shifting the door to the left when it's closed. Right now it's all the way to the right. So that is the rightmost position for this door, going in that direction. Next thing we do is we mount this door and try to get it true, and then close the gap. So that's the next challenge. It's set for that. I hope you liked this video. If you did, please consider subscribing, giving me a like, and leaving me a comment. I really enjoy making these videos, and I want to know from you how I can make them better. The whole point of these videos is to demonstrate that if I can do something, you can do it too. Well, that's it for now. So long, and remember, keep making.